Oh, there's another bite as soon as it hit. Or something has it. Grabbed it and took, got him. What is happening, fishing friends? Welcome to another episode. Out tonight for another evening fishing trip. I, like I say, I don't get to do this much and I've been trying to make more of a, a point to do it. So out tonight, uh, I haven't been here for quite a while. I was here once earlier this year and caught a couple, but we'll see what it's like tonight. It looks like there might be a little vegetation. Maybe we'll get on a plopper bite. I don't know, I've got a couple things I'm bringing. So daylight's burning, enough yapping, start fishing. You know what, let's, let's switch over and try a little top water, see if anything is willing to come up and eat a plopper. Now this is a Debo special paint job plopper. And I threw it right in the grass. Oh, 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 something grabbed it and took, got him. Oh my gosh, really? Well, starting out the night here, I decided to just kind of go through with a, a stick bait. This is actually that six cents clout. See if there was anything out here. I see some stuff moving. Didn't know if all of it was uh, was carp. By golly, not all of them. There we go. There we go. Debo. Catching the monsters to start out with here, folks. I mean, what do you expect? It's Debo's fishing. Got to start off the night with the dink. Trying this six cents clout. Pretty cool looking stick bait. <clears throat> the uh, the combo, just because I've had this reel and wanted to get it out. This is the old Shimano Corrado D. This is from, gosh. Look at that. Uh, that thing casts. Old school Corrado D. Still cast great. Is that a fish? Yep. Still cast good. Still catches fish. Apparently all the little guys are schooled up out here. All right, well, two casts, two dinks. Golly, look at him. There we go, another little dude. Might have been the exact same fish, I'm not sure. Not, not trying to say that was a different fish. Okay, two for two with the clout. We get some size. I'm thinking maybe as the sun starts going down here, we've got a little bit of ripple and stuff. We'll get on some. Uh, we'll get on some top water. I bet. Oh, there's another bite as soon as it hit. Wow. Well, I have found the the dink stockpile here. Every dink that's in the lake, apparently, is sitting right here. What do you expect for an episode of uh, of Debo's fishing? There we go. Dink number three, and those are true Debo dinks. I don't know if all three of those fish together would even equal a pound. <clears throat> well. Combo feels good anyway. Is there anything else with some size out this way? Any sort of size to these fish or just tons and tons of little, little, little dudes? We'll keep going around and see if we can find anything else, but since we know there are some fish here, I don't know if there's a, you know, like a hard grass line or a piece of wood. Oh, something just grabbed it there. Oh, thumped it. Is this a fish? Oh my gosh, it is. <laughs> I thought it was that it was stuck on some grass. No, sir, you are a, a dink of a fish if I've ever seen one. There we go. Another little tiny fella. Place is full of little tiny fellows, apparently. Dink beat down. I've seen some, looks like good fish out here moving after something. I've seen a bunch of carp over there, but it looked like there was little fish or something jumping over here. Another monster, folks. I am on the monsters tonight. Wow, I can't believe that's all I've, that's all I've got tonight. Used to be some decent sized fish in here. Maybe they all got fished out. I don't know. I haven't caught a fish over a pound yet tonight. How many fish is that? Well, I'm just trying to throw this stick bait in spots where I think there might be some drop offs. You can see here where it kind of goes calm and then ripples out there. I know it kind of gradually drops off and trying to find anything where I might have a, a harder grass line or anything like that where we might have some bigger fish kind of sitting on. You know, once they've spawned, usually go out to the deeper water, but you know, a small lake like this, heck, the deepest spot might be, you know, eight, 10 feet. So 
I don't know, just trying to find some of those drop-offs. Anything that might be holding some bigger fish, I guess that's kind of the conundrum tonight. All I can find is dinky dinks. All right, well, on my way out of this place, I'm going to Hail Mary to a couple little spots here, see if we can get anything. Oh, there's a bite. Oh, something had it. Something grabbed it. Anyway, try a couple casts here, and I think we're going to go try a different spot. Hasn't, uh, hasn't really the type. Oh, there's a bite. I had a couple somethings bite it there. Something has it. Got him. Oh, there we go. Decent little dude right there. On the tree. Pfft, I said we were going to hit that little tree that I saw there before we left. Glad we did. Best guy of the night here. Dang it. Ah, goodness. All right, well, here's a perfect time to show you how to do the gill fish removals. He's got it right down on the side of his throat. So you can see I've taken the top of the hook, turned it just barely outside of his gills, and I want to be very careful here. You can see there's the point of the hook. I'm going to take and just barely pop that out, just like that. And the hook comes right out of there. He had it just barely in the side of his throat there, but he will be fine. A little bit of blood. Off he goes, nice. Uh, using that gill removal, taking that hook, so he had got that just barely in the in the front of his stomach there like that, so I just took the side of it, if you pretend this is his stomach down there, just barely had it like that. I waited a little bit too long to set that hook. I just went in underneath the gill, pulled that point down and just popped it up that way and pulled it out. That will save you so many fish instead of trying to rip that out of its stomach. That fish would have died for sure, but like that he had just a little bit of blood from there, but he will be good. All right, Fisher friends, that was the end of the night. I went to another spot after that, uh, and it sucked. Didn't pan out. I thought I was going to get on like a, you know, a sun going down bite, top water and stuff, but I didn't. So as promised, uh, I didn't, I didn't film an outro after that because it was dark when I got done, but as promised, it actually worked out kind of well because I'm going to show you the gill hook removal using a t-shirt, a hook in my hand. This is actually going to mimic the process extremely well. I tried it over there, uh, you know, when I was checking out my stuff and I'm like, Actually, this looks extremely similar to what you would do. So let me grab some pliers. Bump the camera there. Sorry, I got my pliers. Okay, so for the gill hook removal, I'll point the camera down here. But what I'm going to do is kind of take this shirt and wad it up, um, put it inside my hand because this is really going to replicate what it looks like um, when you look down a, a bass's gullet, right? So you open up their mouth and down in there, you're going to see that that stomach, the gullet with it acts like a muscle and helps pull that food down in there. If you ever put anything like if you see the videos of somebody drops like a shad or a crawfish in their the, a fish's mouth before they let them go, you'll see that gullet work and it works like our esophagus, it pulls that food down. Same thing for the bass. So what I'm gonna do is kind of make a, a, a makeshift gullet here in my hand. I know it sounds really weird, but look. This is the hook. So when the bass swallows that hook, it'll go down in that gullet like so. When it swallows it down in that gullet, we're gonna pretend the hook is up like that. Now, if I were to have, you can see here, that's the hook. If I were to have pliers and just keep pulling this out, I'm gonna end up ripping that fish's guts out. It's gonna bleed all over, it's gonna die. Unfortunately, that happens. That's why this trick is so good because it has saved so many fish's lives for me. It, I'm telling you, it works so well. Now, you'll notice though, when you look at this in the fish's gullet, it's gonna have the point in here, so you can't pull it out straight. If you've, if you've set the hook so hard that the point is actually coming out through, that's why I carry a pair of side cutters and I would cut that tip off or at least the barb so I can take that hook out and pull it through. But if you have it just like this where you can't actually see the tip of the hook, chances are it hasn't really pierced into the flesh that much. We're going to pretend my fingers over here, these are the, the gills, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pliers and come up under the gills. That's, that's why they call it the gill removal. I'm going to come up under the gills with my pliers and I'm going to take the point of the hook, the eye of the hook, or excuse me, uh, the eye of the hook here where you tie the line, and I'm going to pull it down 
toward the point of the hook. So let me take this out here and show you. What I mean is when you take and bend this down, here's the point of the hook. I always wanna bend it down toward the point of the hook because what that's gonna do is take the point of that hook up and point it just like that. And that's what I want because I'm essentially gonna be popping that out free like that. I just poked myself there. What I don't wanna do is take this and bend it this way where I'm gonna take and dig that hook deeper into the flesh and essentially set that hook in there. So remember whichever way, ah, whichever way that hook is going, I'm gonna take the eye of the hook where I tie the line and I'm gonna bend it or I'm gonna turn it down toward the point of that hook and I'm essentially taking that hook point and turning it up. That's always the way you wanna turn it. Okay, so if we go back to our shirt example here, you can see we've got the, the eye here where you tie the line pointing up. I'm gonna take my pliers and come in under the gills. We're gonna pretend this is all the gills of the fish. I'm gonna come in under the gills and be careful not to touch any of the red parts, the, the red gilly part there. You don't wanna rip any of that up. If you do, that fish is gonna bleed out, so be very careful. I'm gonna come up in under the gills, grab the point and take that hook point and turn it down so it's almost coming outside one of the gills, just like that. And you can see in the video exactly how I did that. It's coming out like this. Now you've got two choices here. You can grab here and push straight up, depending on how you have the fish hooked. Once you get it turned like that, you can also just go in the mouth, just like so, look, and I'm gonna start to pull up like that. And literally, it's gonna pull right up out of there. Now I know this is a rough diagram showing how to do it, but that is all I'm doing in that fish's mouth. I'm taking that hook turning it down toward the point to push that point up. And once you do that, you can usually take it out at an angle just like that and it's gonna pop right out of there. I'm telling you, this will save you a ton of fish. All right, fish and friends, I hope that helped you out. I know that has saved me a ton. I don't remember, I think I saw that on a video like a long time ago, years ago, and it saved me so many fish. Like instead of going down the gullet and trying to, you know, rip that hook out of there, you're gonna bleed them out, it's, it's no good. But if you literally just turn that hook over and push it up, you'd be surprised how easy they come out of there. That fish that I had on here bled just a tiny bit, but nothing compared to if you, you know, you'd have been ripping the, from the front. So anyway, hope that helps you all. Hope you enjoyed, you know, there was no monsters tonight, but I don't care. That's why I said, you're not going to see this from, from other people because it's like, you know, new people get on YouTube and they see all these, these folks catching huge PBs and stuff. And I think it's almost like counterproductive as a new angler getting into it. Cause you're like, Oh man, I went out and only caught five dinks. Like I suck at fishing. That's not the case. Like it depends on where you're fishing, how often you can fish. If you can only fish once every two weeks, your chances of catching fish are much lower than somebody that gets out five, six days a week. Right? So uh, be thankful for the time that you have, get out there and fish when you can and make the best of it. If you even just catch dinks, cares you're still catching fish um so tonight my subscribe fishing friend is james creek and trail thank you very much man for watching he just won a giveaway not too long ago uh, i appreciate everybody else who continues to watch support me it means a lot but i gotta get this on the computer and get this video finished up and you're gonna get another video tomorrow so thank you all so much for watching until next time